Hi, welcome. And if you're interested in RC high pass filters, this is the right spot. I uh, had previously made a video on low pass RC filters, and it turned out it, it was one of my more popular videos. And there are several comments on there asking for uh, a similar description of high pass filters. So this is it. I've also d d got a couple videos on um, RL low and high pass filters that use inductors instead. So feel free to check those out if um, you're interested. But what I'd like to do is just kind of jump right into um, high high pass RC filters. But I, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of skip a little bit of the intro to, to capacitors like I did with the low pass filter video. So if you're interested in kind of just getting a little bit of a warm up of like how capacitors work and just kind of refresh your memory, um, you may want to check that that video out first or the first half of it. Um, but I'm just gonna kind of jump right in to um, to how these filters work. So let's go ahead and first take a look at this circuit here. So let me just name out the parts here. So we've got a 20 hertz square wave signal. It's going through this resistor and then it's going to go down through this capacitor. And what we could first do is just to get a feel for this, let's just turn this on and see what happens with this, this square wave source. So I'm going to go ahead and run it. And you can see my square wave is just like a, a positive uh, 5 volts and it goes down to negative 5 volts. So it's just, it's just doing, of course, this is like slowed down a little bit. It's not really 20 hertz. Um, it's not really going 20 cycles per second. We're just slowing it down, but that's kind of how, how it's working. And let's first take a look at what's happening of, of the voltage that's going across this capacitor here. All right, so we went ahead to run this, and you see that this blue, this green up here is, or with cyan now is associated with that voltage of this 20 hertz. So you're showing now that this 20 hertz source is turning on and the voltage across our capacitor, it's starting off um, low, then it kind of tends to, to um, catch up. The voltage across this capacitor is catching up to the voltage across this. And then when that voltage across here drops down to negative 5, you can see that the capacitor um, voltage across the capacitor eventually drops um, to negative 5 as well. It just kind of mimics what's going across the that AC source, but it has a little bit of a time delay uh, before it mimics it. So this is where we had our output voltage for the, the low pass filter was across that capacitor, but it turns out for the high pass filter, the only thing we're gonna change here is we're just gonna look at the voltage across that resistor instead. So let's take a look at what, at what that's doing. Okay, now that I added, I'm gonna just go ahead and reset this and start it again. Okay, so What's happening here is that when I get that initial five volts across this um, AC source as shown by that cyan curve, you can see again, my voltage across my capacitor is just kind of rising up um, slowly to that voltage across my, my source. But then if we look at what's going, across, going on across this resistor, it's basically the exact opposite. And it has to be the exact opposite based on Kirchhoff's voltage law, which tells us that the current or the, the voltage sum around this loop has to sum to zero. So whatever didn't drop across this capacitor has to drop across this resistor. So as this ten, as the capacitor tends to sort of catch up in the voltage to what, what's going across our source, the, um, the voltage across our resistor is going to tend toward, to, towards going to zero. And you can see that that's what's happening here. So let's, let's, let's just see what happens to these voltages when that, the voltage across our AC source drops down to, to negative five volts. Okay, so you see our, our source voltage here, the cyan, it drops down to negative five. And then we can look at what happens across our capacitor where that voltage across our capacitor is gonna slowly drop down to that same level. Um, but the, the voltage across our resistor has to make up for that. And so it's gotta, um, since this is up to, this will be up to five volts and this is going down to negative, negative five, this temporarily has to, has to drop to negative 10 to sort of make that, the KVL loop work out. And then it kind of, slowly goes back, um, trends back towards zero because um, it's got to, as soon as this capacitor catches up, it's got to go back to zero. So it's basically the, the, res, the, um, the voltage across this resistor, whether it's the, the source is at plus five or negative five, is always just going to want to tend towards zero as this capacitor just wants to tend towards following what that, that voltage source is. If we think about this, generally what's happening here is that if we're at 20 hertz, for the most of this duty cycle, 
the voltage across the capacitor is following the source and for mo but for most of this duty cycle the voltage across this resistor is, is zero so at 20 hertz the voltage across the capacitor will sort of will kind of pass that signal well but the voltage across our resistor won't pass it well so let's check out what's happening at a different frequency but before we do that let's go ahead and, and take away this uh, voltage across the capacitor because for a for a high pass filter rc we're, we're just going to be concerned about taking the output across this resistor so for now let's just take out this this signal here and let's go ahead and change this to 85 hertz instead okay so this is pretty interesting what's happening at 85 hertz is um it's interesting because this is a cutoff frequency so what's happening is that voltage across the resistor, it's um, it's um, it's tending back towards zero still, but for a significant portion of this duty cycle, it still looks sort of um, sort of stuck at, at what the voltage was before. So it's still kind of following what it what it is for a certain portion, but then for another half, it's kind of tending towards zero. So this is kind of like halfway passing. Now let's see what happens when we go ahead and ratchet this up to one kilohertz. Um, but before we go there, let's go ahead and take a snapshot of this um, response here so we can we can look at it later. Okay, now going up to one kilohertz, we can see um, this is actually looking pretty good if I, if my goal here is to actually pass um, what that what that voltage source is because you can see that the um, cyan here is my is my square wave oscillating faster now and um, my cyan now is the is that response that voltage across that resistor you can see it's following it pretty well i mean it's kind of it's you can see that it's sort of tending towards zero but that's that's not that big of a of an impact and it's it's pretty close to what our our input signal is so in this case you would say it's passing it so um let's go ahead and take a look at this on a on a frequency plot and see if we can kind of frame these three different um, frequencies that we've looked at Okay, so here is our frequency response plot. So on this x-axis here, we have different frequencies. So at this point, this is at 20, and we're going up on a, on a log scale up to this point. This is going to be um, 200 hertz right here. And on this y-axis, we have the, um, the dB. So if you're up here at the top, that means there's like no attenuation. But if you go down here to, um, to the bottom, that's going to be close to um, uh, minus 20 dB if, at, the, at this line right here. So what our last signal we looked at was at one kilohertz. So let's go ahead and look, go up to one kilohertz here, and it's right about here. And you can see that we're at negative um, 0 0.03 dB. So basically what that means is there's hardly any attenuation, which you can see from that, that plot that we had on, in the time domain where it's following it pretty well, hardly any attenuation. So that means we're going to be definitely passing it. The signal is going to be passing if we're looking at the voltage across that resistor at one kilohertz. But let's go back down to 85 kilohertz, which is right about here somewhere. And you can see it's about at negative 3 dB, which is our, our cutoff frequency. So it's kind of passing, kind of not, kind of in the middle. And if we go down to 20 hertz, like we looked at, we see that we're at um, negative, about negative 13 dB, which means that, that it's being attenuated um, pretty significantly at that point. So um, you're de definitely not, not passing it well. Um, so that's how you look at a, um, a frequency response plot and you kind of interpret. So each of these, each of these like little snippets, each of these frequencies we looks at sort of corresponds to um, one of the points on this graph. All right, so you can see in general that we can use essentially the same circuit that we use for our RC low pass filter and we can use it for a high pass filter just by taking, switching that output voltage. Instead of taking that output, output voltage over the capacitor for the low pass filter, we take it over the resistor for the high pass filter and we get basically the opposite effect and, it, and the basic intuition here it's it's the opposite effect because of kvl they the the voltage across um, each of those elements has to be opposite if, if the voltage across one element is following the input signal well then by definition the voltage across the the other element can't and, and vice versa so we get sort of this reciprocal effect um, across those two elements and they, one acts as a low pass and the other acts as a high pass. But if you're interested in how this works with inductors instead of capacitors for RL low and high pass filters, um, I've got a couple of videos on those too, so check those out. But until then, hope this helps and take care.